In today's video we will be deploying a lot of small communication relay craft that will be circling around Duna and establishing the communications net relay network that will help our atmospheric lander land. So all in all this is what they're gonna look like when it's done so it will be at 30 degrees inclination some low orbit some high orbit which will be doing the relays but let's go. So first things first this is our mega deployer that contains two uh, non-atmospheric landers, one atmospheric lander, and a total of six relay satellites. So those six relay satellites will be placed in two in equatorial and two at various plus 30 degrees and minus 30 degrees inclination. However, we need to first get them to Duna. So we are now in eight minutes, we will be executing the ejection maneuver that will make sure that this vessel gets to Duna in the first place. So this was the third of the three craft that we were sending to Duna. Just a quick recap, first one was the Duna orbital station with a couple of Kerbals. I think it was Jab and Bob that were going there, or Jab and Bill, I'm not exactly sure which two. The second one was the small probe that has actually basically ended up in the orbit around Ike. And this is the third one. Uh, all of these craft have left the Kerbin sphere of influence simultaneously and then entered the Duna's, same of inference, Duna's sphere of influence almost simultaneously. So uh, the reason why I'm breaking up in three individual stories is because I thought that would be easier for you guys to follow and also it makes more for a more interesting and compelling story. Do let me know. I mean, I know some of you said that you are fine with the all three craft launching, all three craft arriving, but I thought it would be a little bit repetitive. I think this is actually a much, much more compelling story, so to say. So. Right, we have our Duna transfer, and as you can tell, everything looks dandy. Uh, we have a decent encounter, and all we need to do is to actually put a maneuver note somewhere along the route and just make sure that we can tweak our orbit at that point. So let's first go and focus Duna. I do want to make sure, oh, okay, that we tweak our the maneuver note so that we get a nice equatorial arrival. So I'm just trying to see how much things will change if I do the change here. Okay, I'm doing a little bit of changes and those changes are tiny. As you can tell, 1.4 meters per second, they're really, really tiny. However, I just need to be very careful in terms of adjusting because right now the these uh, changes are tiny. Later on, they will be much more pronounced. Okay, 188, I, I'm actually almost happy with that because that will actually put it to decent and let's put up the correction cube. So 1.1 meters per second, so tiny. If I was to arrive at Duna Sphere of Influence and then do the change, it would have been a lot more. That's the way how we conserve fuel. Not that we need to conserve it, we have total of 6.9 thousand, almost 7 thousand Delta V. So let's get cracking. Let's just first target Kerbin and uh, then we need to activate the dish. There we go, that's one. And the second relay, I'm actually thinking that I would like to target a specific satellite even, but uh, there we go. Bye bye Kerbin. So this is the third of the three craft that is leaving the Kerbin for Duna. And I think once in the future, when we finally get to maybe even colonize Duna, there will be, we will be selling multiple craft simultaneously, I guess. So there we go. Here we are, and we have finally left the Kerbin's Sphere. Oh, we have not left the Kerbin's Sphere of Influence. We have actually arrived at Duna. Yeah, I have skipped forward a little bit. So we have finally arrived in the Duna Sphere of Influence. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna toggle the SAS, and I'm gonna turn off the um, turn off the um, flight computer so that we basically hold our inclination. Then we're gonna be pointing the radial out or oh yeah and then we need to be periapsis is a little bit too low so i have thrust limited and i just want to burn a teeny tiny maneuver just to make sure that we raise our periapsis above 15 kilometers that's all so how much do we need to burn uh, to get 100 i think two meters per second so it's really tiny 
Okay, I did put the thrust limiter, limiting thrust percentage, so that it doesn't overburn it. Signal delay is too high. I mean, okay, sure. Let's move it a little bit forward. Let's move it like four minutes and then execute the plan maneuver. At this slow thrust, you really have to modify the exhaust of your engine because otherwise you would be massively overburning. So, okay, and here you go. All right, beautiful. So now we have thr our thrust limiter is five meters per second. We will need to correct this obviously, but first things first, let's plan the circularization maneuver so that we get orbital insertion around Duna. And that's supposed to be some, I don't know, 498 meters per second. I'm thinking a hundred by 500 kilometer orbit, point the node maneuver prograde, and then I pressed execute. There we go. So our burn time would be 10 minutes and 31 seconds because dumb me, I have forgotten to actually increase the thrust limiter. Yeah. Let us just appreciate Duna arrival for a second here. There we go. Look how beautiful it looks. Like I said, Duna is my favorite planet in KSP. I do li love the EV system and everything, but um, yeah, okay. Oh, we should start to burn already. Oh, it's burning so little. Oh boy. Yeah, I have forgot about that. Right. So the post commentary me has forgotten about that. So I figured, well, <laughs> this is going to be burning for 10 minutes. Oh boy. So I just jacked up the time acceleration and waited until it finally finishes everything. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. It just takes some time, I guess. And but we're, while we're doing that, we can actually do some experiments. Telemetry report sending out, Gravioli sending out. Yeah, there's a silver lining to everything. At least I managed to focus on the science while the craft is doing its twitchy wiggling. I mean, it almost looks like ASP2, you know? Ha, 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 ha. Unt, 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 unt. Yeah, we should put some disco music here. Yeah, note to my basically editing self. All right, so hopefully in two minutes and 13 seconds, we will be finalizing our burn. And on the plus side, after that, I think I have successfully increased the thrust limiter because, well, you know, fool me once, but not twice. All right, there we go. Oh, there was a little bit of a longish burn and stop twitching, kill rotation, and now signal delay and increase the thrust limiter. Thank you, significantly, good. Now we're good. All right, so that puts us in 500 by 100 kilometer orbit. And once again, when I do that, I'm going to actually move to 500 by a little bit higher orbit, I think. So there we go. But here we are and I'm ready to start thinking about deployments. So let me see what we what we can do. 500 by 100 kilometers. I think it's actually good for the transfer. So it will help also the satellite. So first we activate the antenna, then we decouple and then we will be enabling the solar panels. All right, I'm actually putting the flight computer because it's, like I said, everything is happening with signal delay. We are playing with a remote tech, so that makes things a little bit harder because I cannot directly remote control the craft. I have to control it via the flight computer. I send them commands and then I tell it what to do. Okay, so extend the solar panels and those will be happening in 60 seconds. Here we go, target. You should be putting the large Duna Explorer craft because that one will be acting as relay. And guys, as always, when I'm deploying lots of satellite, I have just put another three screens showing the deployment of various communication satellites because they are more or less exactly the same. So I figured you said, guys, you, you, you like it. So I figured might as well do it. So yeah, there we go. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open the antenna and now we should start queuing the parameters. So uh, in other satellites, I have chosen that I would like to rather put the Ike as a target because those relays will also be relaying to Ike. And I think these antennas are just enough so that we can reach Ike as well. 
So I'm talking about, of course, the comms DTS, you know, the flat antenna. Right. Okay. So all in all, in total, we will be putting another maneuver node where we will be increasing the, or actually this one, the first one will be decreasing. Others will be increasing. So two satellites are going to go into the um, in, into the equatorial orbit with a descending node of being 0.0, .0 compared to Ike. So that's the main screen. Others are going to go in highly ellipt or not highly, but elliptical orbits at plus 30 and minus 30 degrees. There we go. All right. So we're got to start the burn. And for the satellites, the one that will be, uh, that will be in, uh, yeah, in the equatorial orbit. Sorry, my, my head is not working. Uh, they will be going in uh, 500 by 500 kilometers and there will be some station that will be actually lower. I think the Duna crude station is lower. So we'll have to keep an eye regarding our relays and how they behave when it comes to that. When we will be launching the lander. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. And right now we are uh, in the main craft is actually in the 500 by uh 114 640 kilometer orbit so we will do some tweaks make sure that everything is set up correctly there we go we have the burn and that one is oh 637 by 634 honestly i actually like that orbit and i think it will be good because it will allow us to cover a lot of the sky and yeah we're gonna call it dulna equatorial relay one There we go. That one actually looks cool. Other satellites have been deployed in various inclined orbits. There we go. So after deploying everything, the satellites looked like this. And this is how our relay network looked like. I'm sorry that I've removed a little bit of the satellites, but I wanted to show you just how many of these connections are there and how this is the signal being relayed from Duna back to Kerbin. I really love the dance. The, that's the reason why I actually disabled so that there are not too many satellites visible and not the UI visible. I just thought it looked cool. All right. So that being said, we have now this tiny satellite. And uh, this tiny satellite is actually the atmospheric relay or sorry non-atmospheric um, lander so the idea was to send this one to ike sorry I'm, i keep forgetting the names of these smaller moons yeah i know i it's a shame i have like well over six thousand hours in ksp1 and now that i start playing ksp2 i mean it's still the same system but i just keep forgetting all right so Okay, this is our craft, uh, the relay antennas are up and I'm gonna go and toggle the action group stage. So I'm gonna set everything as a target. I'm gonna put my maneuver node here and then I'm gonna make sure that everything is correctly set up. Good. Node, maneuver prograde and execute. Good. The engines are on, target Ike, hold maneuver prograde, and then we're going to be executing the planned maneuver. Making sure that we get orbital aligned. Oh, look at it. It looks kind of beautiful, doesn't it? All right. There we go. So basically, this relay network was a basically needed for us to be able to control the craft at any point. So let's now do the Ike encounter. There we go. I just need to have a decent enough encounter. Okie doke. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that with this 125 meters per second is burned at the right time. That should be happening in 18 minutes. Let's point maneuver prograde. Solar panels being powered. Everything is beautiful. Look at it go. Beautiful, is it? Right, okay. So at this point, I'm gonna add another maneuver node, which will basically put it around orbit uh, of Ike. 
Oh, and signal delay is too high to appropriate, but the burn is in one day, so actually the error is packed. Why is it packed? Uh, what happened? I have no control over my craft. What's going on? Um, okay. I'm trying to figure out why don't I have any connection to my craft. Is it power or is it relay or is it anything? I have no connection and I'm not that far. Interesting. Ah, uh, I see the potential problem. Electric charge is zero. No, actually direct sunlight. Yeah, um, for some reason, I don't know why I didn't have control over the vessel. Guys, if you have seen why, let me know. I think I'm out of electric charge, to be honest. That's basically what I think happened. And without electric charge, I cannot execute any maneuvers or anything like that. And also, yeah. All right, so I guess that one is lost. We couldn't execute the capture maneuver and yeah, sun blocked by blah, blah. Okay, let's do at least the gravity send. Yeah, no usable comm devices. I cannot send anything. I guess this one has been botched. Okay, well, the sharp eyed among you, let me know what happened. I guess I will just have to leave and accept that that craft is never gonna come home and it will become the stray probe that's going away from Duna. Well. In the next episode, we will be doing the Duna Lander, so look out for that.